Shireen Nishat is one of the greatest artists of our time and here in Davos was bestowed and honored with the Crystal Award. Thank you so much for speaking with NDTV, Shireen, and first congratulations. Thank you very much. Your work is so admired, but it delves in such deep issues. There's gender, there's ide ideology, Islam, but in the end, I believe it's all very deeply personal. Well, you know, I come from Iran, where it's a country divided between its history of poetry and mysticism and terrible politics. And so my work, whether it's a photograph or a movie or a video, it's all about an embodiment of that kind of paradoxical that we Iranians experiencing. I think we have like an identity crisis. Again, we have a long ancient history of mystics and poets, but now we're known as the land of more loss and fanatics. So I think in my work, you know, I have a footing in exploring, you know, both in the music and, and, and the visual language that is all going back to beautiful classic Islamic art, yet the narrative is usually based on today's history. But you broke so many walls. You've named the artist of the decade by Huffington Post and many other awards. So definitely your work has been transformational. Do you feel that Iran is also transformational? itself and is that going to be reflective in your new work as it signs a nuclear deal as it says that we are more open to the world and as your president Hassan Rouhani comes here to Davos well, I just want to stress that my work started from that very personal point of view because I am a representative of a generation of Iranians that were born before the Islamic Revolution and had to live in exile. So a lot of the emotions that you feel both in the way I speak and the way it shows in my work, it's really authentic is what I've lived through and I don't think you can fake it as an artist so I have a feeling that if it wasn't for my personal life circumstances I couldn't have articulated the work or the words that I say addressing the president or the Iranian culture so this feeling of exile nostalgia this idea of perpetual conflict between East and West the way we are looked upon in the West and the, the way that are divided as a community in Iran, outside of Iran, it's a really a big dilemma for us and for me personally as well. So my work is really to, to really approach it in a way and open it up to others who share the same dilemma basically. And when the world is talking about the Arab Spring, a Middle East revolution, and now talking about possibly this spreading to other corners of the world, do you feel that that is a thought which is also now sort of initiating you to perhaps come in with newer work? Or, or is the story different depending on you know, your artist's creativity? I've actually done a lot of work exactly about the Arab Spring and the whole notion of patriotism and in photography. Um, it's true that that whole euphoric experience of the Arab Spring brought a new hope for the Middle East who we felt that forever we were going to go down with dictatorships and tyranny. But some reason these young people who began to protest and it became very contagious renews a sense of hope that maybe we don't have to up with all of these people and we could get rid of them if in fact we rise as, as a community and then nothing could stop us and and then unfortunately there were some you know not so good results but at the same time I think you know it was like a fire that had started that has not yet died out and and I think that you know you can see that you know all over the Middle East but also you see it in Kiev today in Ukraine you see it all over the world this energy of people wanting to you know, fight the people of power. Um, this is a perpetual, timeless, universal issue, and the Arab Spring basically brought it up again. And art can change politics, it can move borders, it can change people. Absolutely. I, I believe in the power of community, and I believe the role of artists or culture is to be a conduit between those who hold power and those who fight power. That's beautifully put. You also said art is not a crime, and there is no one who can define what art is. Exactly. I think art could be as much about beauty and poetry as much as it could be a sharp knife uh, confronting uh, issues without compromising and, and I think uh, without any particular agenda and at least that's the way I approach it. My work is all about uh, beauty and high aesthetic but it's also uh, really touching uh, very important dark disturbing issues and very often very violent. And when you go back now, what is going to be consuming you? What is going to be the next focus of art? Because that will also be a focus of the world we live in. I'm going back to New York. I've been 
preparing a feature-length film about the life and art of Omar Kulsum, who's a legendary Egyptian singer. I'm not Arab, I'm not Egyptian, but I think this is a universal symbol of a woman that transcended everyone's expectation, even a Western idea of expectation of an artist who was loved by men, by women, rich and poor, religious, non-religious, even the Israelis loved her. So I think it's a very, very relevant subject um, and that it needs to be made now. And so that's what I've been busy with and I hope this is a dream that we could finally shoot the film. Thank you for moving us Thank all you. so deeply and sharing <laughs> such amount of beauty as well as pain because they both exist side by side. Thank you for caring about talking to me. <laughs> Thank you.